I now have the honor to give the floor to the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka to make a statement. Mr. President, distinguished delegates, Mr. President, we thank you for convening this high-level plenary meeting of the General Assembly to commemorate and promote the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons as observed in the opening statement. We also thank the Secretary General and the President who unequivocally stood for the elimination of such weapons. This event comes, distinguished delegates, as a constant reminder of our intransigence to a danger that we recklessly and frivolously disregard. Distinguished delegates, it is apposite that we take serious note of the warning by the Secretary General at the opening of the general debate when he sounded the alarm by reminding us that we are, as he put it, on the edge of an abyss, on the edge of an abyss, an expression that captures the dismal situation, I say, the planet is placed in by virtue of the sheer greed for the supremacy of power by some member states, little realizing that we are just a minor planet hovering around one of the lesser stars. My dear friends, the time is urgent and grave. Global nuclear disarmament remains one of the oldest goals of this august body and was the subject of this Assembly's first resolution in 1946 for reasons well known. In 1959, the Assembly endorsed the objective of the general and complete disarmament. It was at the fifth non-aligned summit in Sri Lanka in August of 1975 that calls were first made for a special session on disarmament that led to a consensus resolution, paving the way for the special session on disarmament in 1978, recognizing that nuclear disarmament should be the priority objective in the field of disarmament. Every United Nations Secretary General in this assembly has actively promoted this goal, yet there needs to be greater progress and genuine commitment to eradicate these weapons of mass destruction. Mr. President, 76 years, one month, and 19 days to yesterday, at 11.02 a.m. on Thursday, the 19th of, 9th of August, 1945, the second atomic bomb exploded over the city of Nagasaki. Now, this works out to 27,809 days ago today. Ironically, if this number was halved, it is almost the total number of nuclear weapons that remains today. 13,080 nuclear weapons. We remain concerned that nuclear weapon states are now modernizing their arsenals and other states are building nuclear weapons and churning out new nuclear doctrine, almost as a morbid fanaticism when millions are starving, when millions do not have a roof over their heads, nor portable water, nor health care, or sanitation. So much so that nuclear war is the platform today for cyber games on electronic platforms that corrode the minds of our youth and promotes aggression. While the number of deployed nuclear weapons has declined since the height of the Cold War, it is regrettable, I say, regrettable, 
that not one nuclear weapon has been physically destroyed pursuant to a treaty and nuclear disarmament negotiations have ceased or been deadlocked for a considerable period of time. Mr. President, the world is all too aware of these catastrophic consequences of the detonation of a nuclear device and the threat that it would pose not only to mankind but to the entire planet. The grave risk to our planet will remain as long as nuclear weapons exist. There is also the danger of accidental, mistaken or unauthorized use or threat from technical failures, human errors, as we have seen it recently, cyber attacks or these weapons falling into terrorist hands that could lead to unimaginable consequences. Mr. President, as we mark the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons, let us reaffirm our commitment to global nuclear disarmament as one of priority. As we are all recovering and grappling with from one from the ravages of a global pandemic, it makes one to realize how we need to work collectively to confront this menace. As often said, we are in it together. Dare I hope that we would use this momentum to look at disarmament and nuclear weapons with greater purpose and hold that we can achieve peace and security of a world without nuclear arsenals towards the objective of the total elimination of nuclear weapons would be the only absolute guarantee, I say, against the grave danger they pose to humanity. Mr. President, nuclear weapons by nature are inhumane and indiscriminate, and their testing and use can cause catastrophic consequences on populations and the environment, both globally and beyond national borders. It is appropriate to recall that the International Court of Justice, in its advisory opinion on the legality of the threat or use of nuclear weapons, in 1996 held, quote, there exists an obligation to pursue in good faith and bring to a conclusion negotiations leading to nuclear disarmament in all its aspects, under strict and effective con con international control, close quotes. In a famous dissenting opinion, the Sri Lankan judge, Justice Veeramantri, staunchly in the ICJ, opposing the possession of nuclear weapons, noted when he said, quote, my considered opinion is that the use or threat of use of nuclear weapons is illegal in any circumstances whatsoever. It violates the fundamental principles of international law and represents the very negation of the humanitarian concerns which underlie the structure of humanitarian law. Mr. President, when Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb, had witnessed the first detonation over Hiroshima on the 16th of July, 1945, recalled a well-known line from the Hindu text, the Bhagavad Gita, and this is what he said, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. This amply distinguished delegates sums up the dangerous threat posed by nuclear weapons and we only need to look at the horrors that befell Hiroshima and Nagasaki to see the devastating effects of nuclear weapons. I hope never again nuclear weapons would be used. We can only achieve total elimination if all of us, all countries, both nuclear and non-nuclear, genuinely work towards with commitment and strong political will to achieve this objective. This event today therefore underscores that we must take collective and determined action to ensure the total elimination of nuclear weapons. We take this opportunity to reiterate our fullest support for the total elimination of nuclear weapons and express today our solidarity with the international community and support every global effort to achieve a nuclear-free world and eliminate nuclear weapons. I thank you. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka for his statement.